If you want to take your Steam Deck games from looking like this to a little bit closer to this, I'm going to show you a new frame generation mod with Decky. We'll take a look at a few different games and then I'll show you how to actually install this mod. And now that you got the plan, let's dive into it. We're going to start off first with some game demonstrations. So the first one up is The Witcher 3. On the left here we have uh, without frame generation and on the right we're running the mod here. You can see that we're getting in the high 50s, mid 50s without the mod. And with the mod, we're in the mid 80s, all the way up to even in the mid 90s. Although if you take a look at the corner icons there, like the, the menu there, it's kind of flickering. So it's not perfect. There is some bugs that I've noticed in a few games here. Uh, so that's something you're just going to have to keep in mind with using this mod. Then looking at a game that doesn't seem to have that issue, this is Hogwarts Legacy, and we don't seem to be having that same flickering that we're getting on the other game. It is still present, but it's not near as extreme, and it's not affecting the menus. So with this game, we're getting, you know, I don't know, high 30s, mid 40s without the frame generation, and with it on, we're sitting in the 70s, sometimes going up into the 80s as well. If you look at the sides of the characters, you can see that there is some artifacting, so it's not like it's perfectly clean, but when you're playing on something like a mobile screen, um, you know, seven inches, eight inches, you're probably not gonna notice it that well. So really it's up to you. For me, I would rather have frame generation and have minor artifacting like we have on this game or on the character, uh, than have uh, experience that's a little bit more unstable at the 30s. Next, we have A Plague Tale. This is the second game that came out. Uh, here we're getting just under 30 FPS. Uh, sometimes it goes past 30 without frame generation. So this game I would probably suggest would be right on the verge of being usable with frame generation because you want to have at least 30 FPS for it to be able to generate frames that are a little bit more consistent and overall stable. Uh, but when we take a look at the other side, now that we're in a little bit less of a crazy area, we're getting 40 without frame generation, and we're getting in the 60s to 70 uh, with the frame generation on here. This game does get that jittering text, like you can see it in the bottom right here, that it's flickering quite a bit, so that's something that you're going to have to deal with if you're using frame generation on this game. Hopefully it's an issue that can be addressed in a future update. And next up we have Atomic Heart. This one is a game that honestly runs great on its own. Like I'm running at high settings here and I'm getting over 60 FPS without frame generation. So I don't know, this game you can either max out the settings or you could potentially just not use frame generation. But I did want to show it to you because it is one of the games that does work. So we're getting in the, I don't know, somewhere between 60 to 80 without the frame generation. And when we turn on frame generation, we're way over 100 FPS. So for this game, I would recommend frame generation if you're playing on an external monitor at a higher resolution than 720p. One other thing that I wanted to show is if you're going to be playing a game that already has frame generation, use the one that's built in. Like this is Cyberpunk, for instance, which has FSR 3 frame generation. So on the left, you can see that it's perfectly stable. There isn't any flickering. But on the right, we're getting that jittering issue. And it's actually really bad in this game because I'm moving so quickly. So always use the built-in frame generation if that's an option for you. And one other thing to note is that the frame generation does not work in every single game. So when I turn it on here in Dying Light, it actually crashes the game. And I wasn't able to fix that. There might be a fix, but I wasn't able to figure it out in the short time. So that's frame generation on the Steam Deck. It's currently in beta, so there's still some you know bugs to be worked out as you can see here. Uh, but if you're wanting to get early access, you can right now. It's free to install. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you're interested in seeing how to do that, stick around. I have a guide to take you through the step by step. The first thing that you need to do is actually go to desktop mode. So what you need to do is go to the power button here, and then you just need to click on switch to desktop. And then it'll boot up the desktop environment. Now that you're in desktop mode, we want to go to those two links that are in the video description. This is to get Decky Loader as well as the mod. So for Decky Loader, once you get to the site, just click the download button at the top of the page. And then we also want to get our other mod, which is called the Decky Frame Gen mod. You can also find that link in the description. Click on releases on the right side of the page there. You'll see the current version. And then you want to click on deckyframegen.zip to download the file. The file isn't very large, so it should not take too long. So you can minimize the window. And then what we want to do is go to our file explorer here. And we're going to go to the downloads folder and we're going to drag the decky installer onto our desktop uh, i had to do this you may not have to but it's better to just do it just to make sure it works 
The next thing that you want to do if you haven't done it already is make sure that you have a password set. So to do that, you can go to your settings at the bottom here, click on users, and then you're going to see your username, which mine is just deck, and you can click here to change your password because it's going to ask you for a password in a second. Now we're going to go back to the desktop and double click on the installer. It's going to pop up something, just press continue, and then you need to enter that password I was talking about. Once you've entered it and pressed OK, it's going to automatically run the installer. Then you can select either stable or beta channel. I'm going to click the beta channel and press OK. Second, and it'll be completed. And then all you have to do is press OK to close the window. Now that we've finished that, we can press uh, OK to close it. And then we're going to go to our home folder. And what we need to do here is set some permissions. So you need to find the homebrew folder and right click on it. And then what we want to do is go down to properties. Then click on the permissions tab and what you want to do is make sure that all of these say can view and modify content. Click the box here to apply to the subfolders and press OK. You'll most likely get this pop up. Don't worry about it. Just press skip all. It'll do what it can. Then what you want to do is go into the homebrew folder and we're going to do the same thing on the plugins folder. So right click, go down to properties. Then you want to click on the permissions tab at the top and make sure that they all say can view and modify content and apply to the subfolders. Press OK. You may or may not get a pop up message here. Now that we've set the permissions, we can minimize this window. And the only thing we need to do next is return back to our game mode and then we can actually install the frame gen modification. So either reboot or just double click on the return to game mode and it'll only take a second to get you there. Once you're in game mode, there's a couple of things that you still need to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our Steam menu and go to settings. And you just want to make sure that developer mode is on. So go to system and then there's a little toggle here to enable it. So just enable that just to make sure that it gets proper permissions. Then we're going to click on the right button and we're going to go down to our plugins here and you're going to see Decky here. I have the Decky frame gen there, but that's because I had previously installed it. So don't worry about that. I'm going to delete it and redo it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and make sure that developer mode is also set up here. This will pop up the developer tab that's on the left there. So we're going to navigate there and here's where you're going to be able to actually install the mod. And then we can click install plugin from zip. And this is where you can navigate your files. And we had left that Decky mod in the downloads folder. So just go there, click on it to install, and then it's going to install the mod for you. Now the Decky frame gen mod pops up. So you can click up here to actually install the FG mod. Uh, I already did it. So you will normally need to click on that button. Now you can see that at the bottom here, there's a list of the games here. All you have to do is press patch or unpatch to either patch the game or unpatch it. We're going to patch the Witcher and then I'll show you what it does for the game itself. So once I've patched that, I can go into the Witcher here, press on the settings, go down to properties, and you're going to see that there's a launch option that's now been installed there. Boot up the games like I showed you earlier, and then you're good to go. This mod probably won't be relevant for long. I have a feeling that they're going to bake it directly into the Decky store. So take a look there if this is if you're watching this at, let's say, a later date. So that's the Decky frame generation mod. It's still, like I said before, in its early phases. So I would give it some time to mature. But if you want to try it now, then give it a shot and let me know what your thoughts are on this. One thing that I do really like about the handheld community is how, how much we try to help each other out. And this mod is a perfect example of that. The guy that put it together, I think his uh, name on his server name is like Jason. Um, really thankful for him to put this together. It's something that really brings the Steam Deck back to life. I had kind of put it aside because performance compared to some of my other devices hasn't been great. But it was kind of refreshing to see some of my games actually playing a little bit closer to their Windows handheld counterparts, which I was honestly really surprised to see this. So let me know what your thoughts are on this mod. Have you tried it out? Are you going to try it out? And uh, yeah, let's talk about it in the comments. If you need any help, I'll do my best. For those that are watching this and have more experience than me with the Steam Deck, please help those in the comments that are having trouble. I know that for myself, I did have a few issues when installing it. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.